Hello everyone and welcome to Star Sector. I'm JD Colley and this is going to be a newcomer's guide to Star Sector since uh, there's been a lot of new people joining the game lately who don't necessarily know exactly how to play it. It's a complicated game sometimes and so we're going to be starting a new game and playing through the tutorial, the actual tutorial, not little tutorial there on the menu, in the campaign. Um, we're just going to give ourselves a random name. I'm going to turn off help pop-ups, but if you're new to the game, I strongly recommend you keep these on as they give you a lot of in good information. And they, they'll go away after the first time you read them unless you uncheck the box. So it is very useful. Um, we'll just random face. Uh, he looks good. We're going to leave these settings on normal and continue. Um, there's lots of options here. The uh, bounty hunter and scavenger are the two harder of these five. This one can be uh, pretty much anything. You can end up with real, some really interesting stuff with this one. And these two give you cruisers, or well, cruiser and destroyer. So that's fun. Um, I'm going to be going with the scavenger. The reason for this is because this is probably the quote unquote hardest of the starts. It's not terribly difficult, but Star Sector is a combat focused game at its core. And the scavenger is the least combat focused of the starts. So ergo, it's the hardest beginning that one and I'm going to grab a shepherd because it gives you drones and I like drones. I'm going to start on normal with tutorial and we will begin. So uh, you start here with your little ships. It's our fleet. Continue. We're going to have to scavenge. You can read that if you want in your game but I won't do so. So uh, we need to fly upwards a bit. You do that with the left mouse button. Just click on this little debris field. We can pause the game for a second. Um, you'll find these in the world. If you press tab, you can see them on the, the mini-map. Once you've discovered them, they'll be listed as a debris field. And uh, this is just the sector, or the system. This is the sector. We're in Galatia here, next to Corvus and Samara. We cannot currently leave the system, and that's okay, because we don't want to out yet, because we're small and squishy and die easily. That will be fixed before the end of the tutorial, but... For now, we'll just scavenge as the game suggests. So in this version of Star Sector, you really need to pay attention to these two words in green. It will tell you how likely it is that you're going to get something of value and how likely it is that you're going to be damaged by the operation. Um, in previous versions, it wasn't too significant. You, wouldn't, you weren't likely to lose very much, but in this one, you can lose quite a bit of stuff very quickly. So you want to make sure that the, uh, the salvage operation risk is low. We're going to not pay attention to that this time and see what happens to us but all right so we'll assess it says our scavenging effectiveness is 29 percent, which is fairly low you can see the modifiers from everything and we'll begin operations this is the stuff we find pretty much always take all you just want to pay attention down here in the bottom left to cargo capacity and fuel capacity if you ever go over on either of these you'll start to consume supplies at a faster rate Supplies are your lifeblood. If you run out of them, your ships will start to fall apart and you will die. So, take all. We now have 39 supplies, see? And uh, we're still under capacity, so we're good. We'll confirm and continue. Wait for this to recharge. We'll scavenge again. It's now a significant risk involved in running the salvage operation. We'll begin it again. Our effectiveness has gone down. We'll see if we uh, take a hit by salvaging again. Oh, we lost four machinery. These things are expensive, by the way. There's very, there's a very unlikely chance that I'm going to make back in money what I just lost salvaging this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Well, at that point, it already committed. There'd be no point in trying to get away from it, but I'm just saying, in general, low is pretty much the most valuable thing you can do with salvaging, and anything else is going to be fairly risky unless you have a lot of equipment or uh, skill points in salvaging. Anyway, so we're going to quick save as the game suggests. I apologize, I've got a stuffy nose right now, so if you hear that. Anyway, a pirate fleet is approaching! Oh no! Let's, uh, let's fight it. We're not going to be loading, because we shouldn't need to. This fight is very easy. It's basically an introduction. He's going very slow as well. Oh, is that in vanilla now? The danger symbol? I didn't know that. Hmm. I'm I haven't played a lot of 9.1a, so. Alright, move into engage. We will not transfer command. Transferring command is how you 
move your commander, your, your essentially your ability to control a ship, to another ship in your fleet before combat. You can also do that in combat, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But for the moment, we'll stay in our... Actually, no, I take that back. I will show you how to do it in combat and now, because I want to be flying the Wayfarer, but I'll start off in the Shepherd so you can see the, the, how, to, how to change things. So transfer command, we're going to select the Shepherd. You see our little face now in the Shepherd. All right, we'll continue. So we'll deploy both ships, or you can just hit the All button. Deploy! It costs us eight supplies. That's how much we lose, essentially, by deploying these ships. It costs you resources to fight. Remember that. It's very important. Anyway, we'll unpause the game with spacebar, and our ships move into combat. Now, you can see our little drones and everything. I am using mouse controls, where the ship will always face where my mouse is. I prefer this. I do not like having the, um, the keyboard facing controls because I generally do not focus on aiming my own guns. It's a personal thing. If you prefer aiming your own guns, maybe you'll want to have a different control scheme. Um, if you use the keyboard focus controls here in settings, you can go to settings and, uh, is it? Yes, invert behavior of strafe and turn to cursor. So if you like um, having your keyboard control where you're looking and your mouse simply control your firing arcs, then use this instead. Like I said, I don't like it, but a lot of people do. Anyway, to shift over to our other ship, you click on the other ship, and down here you can either press X right there, or just click this button, and you'll see a little shuttle pop out. Boop! There we are. This ship is immune to damage, that little shuttle, it cannot be killed, so don't fear switching in combat. Anyway, let's kill this guy. Alright, a quick rundown. Right now, these you have these arcs, these are firing arcs. In the bottom left, you can see we have weapons, um, a light assault gun, dual auto cannon, and an ion, ion cannon <clears throat> in our single firing group. These are all represented here. Now, because I have this weapon group selected, they will follow my mouse cursor. As you see. So, I'm not firing, now I am. You hold down left mouse button to fire. Personally, I find the Wayfarer a very difficult ship to uh, both steer and shoot with because of the side-mounted arcs. So what I'll do is often put my... Uh, I'll switch weapon groups to a weapon group that does not have any weapons in it. You can have up to five weapon groups, so I'm going to switch to five right now, and you can see in the bottom left, it deselected one. If I press one again, it goes back. Press two, select my point defense weapons, but I'm going to select five. There we go. Now my ship will fire weapons at this little guy if it's within the range of the arc. The arcs you saw previously, even though you can't see the arcs right now. Now you can't. It shows the arcs of the last weapon group you had if there's no weapon group, no weapons currently selected. So we'll put it, go back to one and then back to five. Anyway, they will now auto fire. See, it says auto fire there. That little button is checked. If you press, uh, let's see, control one. Yes, control one will turn off auto fire. Control 2 will turn off auto fire for the second group, etc. Auto fire is very useful, but can also get you killed because if you look here at our happy little ship, it has flux and hull. Flux is our energy. Essentially, um, it represents in the game a generator that it control it, it gives power to your shields, your weapons, everything, and it can be overloaded. Um, and that is done through flux. If flux is created when you fire weapons, it is created when you take hits on your shields. Um, if it goes to max, your ship will overload. Overload disables shields, disables weapons, disables any special abilities that you have, like in our case it's flare launcher, and you'll be a sitting duck who can only slowly move and spin wildly to try and get out of combat. It, it's very bad. Don't overload if you can help it because that's how you get killed, and that's exactly what you're trying to do to your opponent. In this case, this guy won't overload, ever, because he doesn't use shields. He, him overloading would be a, a, an impressive feat, honestly. So in our case, we're just trying to wear his armor down and kill him, because he's an armor-based ship, and that they don't really worry about it. They, that's the advantage of armor. Um, in this game, things are not balanced around, like, oh, ships with shields are objectively better, because they're not necessarily, if the other ship has a whole crap load of armor and a ton of guns, he'll just burn you down. He'll out overflux you, go through your weaker armor, and kill you before you can burn him down. 
So respect ships without shields, they can be very dangerous. Anyway, let's get back to this. So I'm going to unpause, and my ship should begin firing on its own. I'm going to switch away from the weapon group, and then I can angle so all my weapons hit. See? Wonderful. Uh-oh. My ship is now full on flux. If he fires at me even once right now, I will overload. So I'm going to turn off my guns by pressing X. It says holding fire. And I'm going to back off. Fortunately, he's distracted by the drones right now, which is what they're for. And now that he's far enough away to not instantly shoot me, I'm going to press V. V will vent flux. Venting is essentially the same as overloading. You cannot use guns, shields, or abilities. Hi, kitty. Um, while you're venting, but it vents, or it is much faster than overload and completely empties your flux bar, unlike a uh, an overload, which will only empty some of it and still disable you the same way. So press V, boom, we're venting our flux. And now we can dive back in, turn my guns back on, turn my shields back on. If you notice, there's two different numbers coming up here, yellow and red. Yellow is armor hits, red is hull hits. Hull is bad. As you can see, his hull is decreasing there, right below his flux, and he will soon be dead at this rate. He is losing very badly. I apologize if you can hear my cat. She's very friendly and wants food. So, all right, we'll claim victory. All right, here we have the uh, the screen that shows us what happened in combat. Obviously, the enemy was destroyed. We were not. Um, there's little bars underneath your ships. This is their combat readiness. This is the mechanic that prevents you from just slamming into enemy fleets over and over and over again. Um, your ships essentially, uh, you can see it here in this little tooltip. It says combat readiness there. It's that upper bar. It's at 50% now. It can be much higher. And uh, below a certain percentage, I believe it's 25%, they will start to experience uh, problems. The things will start going wrong on the ship. Essentially, the crew is tired, the machinery is not being upkept well enough because it's been in constant combat, and your ship will start to fall apart. So, and there's some ships that are, they'll, they will begin to do this quickly in battle. They're, they're very high power ships, they have a lot of combat potential, but they simply can't stay on the battlefield for very long. Um, whereas other ships can hang out on the field forever, it feels like. So it, it's a balancing mechanic, and uh, it actually works out pretty well. You get used to it quickly. There are some things you'll end up have happening um, that will reduce your combat readiness, such as if you have to run away from an enemy fleet, they might harass you and lower your combat readiness, which you can do to them as well, and makes it so that they may not be able to flee from you the next time. It, it, it's a useful mechanic in both directions. It can be annoying to be on the receiving end of, but it, it's helpful when you're doing it to somebody else. And uh, you can raise your combat readiness higher than the default 70% as well through crew skills and such things. So it become or not crew skill, sorry, by uh, commander skills. They're, in earlier versions of Star Sector, crew could have different levels, but now it's just all crew. So they're, they're just your generic bog standard crew people. But now you can have leaders such as yourself. You can get more commanders for uh, your ships. Anyway. So we're able to salvage credits from the fight, so we get some money, and we're also going to pick through the wreckage, and oh, we got two Vulcan cannons, which are wonderful little point defense cannons. A quick breakdown of weapons. When you mouse over a weapon, it will give you its primary role, in this case, point defense. It's mount type, so there's three different sizes of mounts, and many different types. Um, the size is small guns fit on small ones, mediums, small and medium weapons can fit on them, and large, it's large and medium, I think. I'm not certain that you can fit small weapons on large mounts. I don't know why you'd ever want to anyway, but yeah, anyway. And only large guns can be put on large mounts. So like, obviously, a large gun can't fit on a medium mount, so they, they can only be fit on large mounts. Anyway, <clears throat> beneath that, you have ordnance points. That's the cost to mount this on a ship. Your ship has limited ordnance points. If we confirm and continue, we're going to take all first. Oops, almost left our stuff behind. Confirm, continue. We open our refit screen. You can see your ship here, all its little weapon arcs and its guns it has mounted and up here in the top corner you see this. This is your uh, ordnance points. If we remove a gun, it goes down because that gun costs six ordnance points. Remove them all. That's how many ordnance points I have. If I take off, if I have all of these things still filled, if I take these down, our ship is now stripped. 
anyway, you don't want to do that. But that shows you that different weapons have different costs to deploy on a ship. Um, so there are some weapons that are much more powerful than their other weapons of the same size, but are balanced by their ordnance cost. You just simply can't mount very many of them unless your ship is exceptional. Um, this ship, ha oh good, it has reinforced bulkheads already. This is super useful, uh, especially early in the game, when your ships can have a high chance of dying, or if you're using frigates a lot, frigates tend to die even in lower, later in the game, they're just squishy. Huh? Sorry if you can hear that, that's the garbage truck outside. Anyway, um, this prevents ships from being unsalvageable. If they die, you almost always will be recoverable after battle. It's very useful. They'll get what they call demods. Um, you'll see those a lot early in the game. There'll be little red marks up here, I believe, your top or le top left or top right, and then they'll show up in the whole features and mods as debuffs, like uh, things that basically mean this ship has been broken badly enough, it's unrepairable without serious refits, and those things will be there. But they'll also make the ship cheaper to maintain and field because it's so broken, it's not really hard to keep together. It's like, well, duct tape doesn't cost a lot as opposed to the actual material used to keep ships apart or together. So anyway, on our way. So we defeated the pirates, we'll save to advance the tutorial. Ah, see, the D designation right there in the tooltip. All right, we're going to improve our character. Level 50 is the max. You probably will reach that, it's not too difficult to do. It was going to be changing in the next version though, to like level 15 or something, but a much cooler system. Anyway, so <clears throat> there are three trees. To put points into a tree, you don't just click them. As you can hear, it's not working. You have to first put points into a tree to be able to, to raise it. And you must have as many points in this, up to three, as you want to put into a skill. So where you put these is your choice. There's a lot of different things you can do. I personally really love the industry tree, but I would not recommend that to be a beginner. Um, unless you want to. I mean. There's no, there's no reason you shouldn't. Have fun with how you want to build your ships. Um, combat is mostly focused on making your personal ship very powerful. If you look up here, um, where's a good example? Okay, this one's nice and simple. Level one, level two, and level three, all of them have that bracket at the end that says piloted ship. What it means is piloted ship only. This, All the things in this skill tree apply only to your ship, not to your fleet not to ships in your fleet com controlled by another commander, it's, uh, one of your officers. Um, let's see, where's one that is not that way? Here we go. There's not very many skills that are all ships in fleet anymore, but this one is one of them. All ships in fleet. So if you're more fleet focused, this is a great skill to put points into. This will improve all the ships as opposed to these ones, which will improve your ship. But understand, if you have all of these, your ship will be terrifyingly powerful compared to another ship of its class. And you will run into uh, AI officers, enemy officers, who are built like that. So you need to make sure you're ready for them because they absolutely will have officers that are completely combat focused and just utter nightmares. Um, let's see. So I don't really, eh. Actually, we're gonna reset that. I'm gonna put one there, there, and there. So I get, uh, I move faster. I have more flux capacitors, so it, it costs, there's a maximum number of flux capacitors on a ship. I just increased it by 20% and I increased the flux capacity of my piloted ship. So my ship now has slightly a 10% stronger flux capacity, which means it takes 10% longer to kill me, which is, you know, pretty cool. You don't have to build your stuff the way I did, really. You can do it how you want. Um, let's see, after dispatching the pirates, okay, we're going to Ansiria. So you can read through all that if you'd like. You press tab, press E, either one works. E takes you to this screen. If you follow the tutorial, you can click on that and then press S to show on map, which will take you to this screen. Right click on Ansiria and it will plot a course. This is independent of your normal movement. Normally you left click on things to move. On this screen you can right click and it'll basically set a waypoint. And now if you look in the bottom right it says course laid in for Ansira. I've been saying that wrong. Ansira. And then you can, if I click over here, I'll deviate from that course and then I can click this little button and it will send me back on my correct course. So hold shift to speed up time 
it's about to tell me that. Sustained burn as well is a nice little ability to see shift to speed up time. So this little ability right here is a wonderful thing. It basically doubles your movement speed at the cost of being much, much less uh, nimble. You can't turn very quickly, but you go really, really fast. This will be your default movement speed for most of the game. Um, one little trick with it, if you're trying to make a twi quick turn, turn it off and turn it back on. It cancels all momentum when you shift between burn modes, and so you're able to stop on a dime using it. Or, if you're already moving and you want to stop on a dime anyway, turn it on and it will also halt your momentum that way. Your momentum, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> So, this is the most important lesson you will get in the game right here. <laughs> Learning to turn on your or turn off, depending on the context, your transponder. Super important. This little thing here. Click it twice, it turns it on, and now the police won't arrest us for running dark. It's it, They don't like it when you have your transponder off. Basically, they think you're smugglers, which if you have your transponder off, you probably are. So, let's fly into Ansira here. You just run into it. You can also go to the space station there. It'll bring up the same menu, usually. There are occasions where this, the star base is separate from the planet. A separate market, they call it. Anyway, we're going to open the comm directory and talk to Volta Boss, which will probably diff be different in your game. But we're going to not... I, we know what's going on. If you want to find out what's going on in Star Sector, you can talk to him there. Take the what's in it for me. It will give you money. What's the plan? We're going to fly into a pirate base and talk to someone. And if they notice me, run away. All right. Good luck. Let's see. So there are some mercenary officers here. These are the commanders I was talking about. You can use these people. You can hire them. You ask them what they can do. It tells you. It tells you how much they cost. If you offer... We can't afford that, and you know that way you can get commanders for your ships. We don't need that right now, honestly. We will, however, trade. I'm going to sell stuff. Now, actually, no, I'm not, because we're going to go to the pirates, and the pirates have a black market as well. If you sell things at the black market, like, for instance, um, there's a tariff here of 30%. Basically kills any profit you're going to make. Now, granted, we didn't pay for this, so it's pure profit anyway. We're just getting less profit. If we go to the black market, no tariff. Selling things at the black market is always more profitable, but it will reduce the stability of the world, and the cops will notice, even if they don't catch you doing it, they will become more and more suspicious. I mean, come on, if every single time your fleet shows up as a system and there's a sudden flurry of black market activity, it doesn't take a super genius to put two and two together and realize maybe you're not on the up and up, right? So, black market is very valuable, but it has a cost, and Eventually, you'll start getting randomly searched more often. You'll lose reputation with the faction in question, and you'll reduce stability, which will decrease the quality and quantity of goods available in the market. So don't do it to someone you like. All right, so he said, we need to go there. Again, the East button will take you to this, and same place. So we're going to go to Derinkuyu Mining Station. There's also those debris fields. I'm not going to salvage that one right now. We might salvage that one, depending on our situation. We will quick save, and I recommend you do too, because this can be a bit sticky. So we're not going to fly straight in. We're going to do a fun little trick. It's not actually a trick. It's totally like legit within the game. We're going to salvage real quick. Just grab some stuff. And then we're going to continue and fly into this belt. Ooh, ooh. Uh. Okay, so this little bar here is the detection range of another fleet. That fleet is hunting us, and it is a pirate fleet, a pirate defense fleet. We don't want to fight it right now. So I'm going to cycle my sustained burn. He just emergency burned. You could hear the, the sound from it. All right. Now, the reason he knew I was there so quickly is I had my transponder on. If you look here, this is your detection range. It says 100% from sustained burn, so sustained burns doubles your detection radius, how far away someone can detect you, and transponder adds 1,000 units to it, just base. So, 
we're very easy to detect right now. We're lit up like a Christmas tree. So we're going to turn that off. And that should momentarily drop our detection range. There we go, down to 98 from 1,700 and something. We are now very hard to detect. Moving obviously increases it up to 390, but if you move very slow, just little bits, never getting above a certain burn height, you will keep your, uh, or burn speed, you will keep your detection extremely low. So, we're going to try and get to that station without being detected. The asteroids will lower your detection radius significantly. If we go out of it, it will be a bit higher. Oh, never mind. It's not doing it right now. Hmm. I was under the impression it decreased your uh, detection radius. Yeah, it does. Okay, times 0.25% hiding inside asteroid belt. All right. And to make ourselves super sneaky, we're going to go dark. I double clicked on it there. Sorry. All right, so now we are really hard to detect even when moving. If we go super slow, we get very almost impossible to detect. They can be right on top of us and not see us. So now we are going to try and get into this station without that defense fleet noticing us. Oh, he's right there. Oh, crap. Oh, well, that's exciting. We are now in deep trouble. We have a Sunder-class destroyer chasing us and another Shepard. I can kill the shepherd. I do not believe I can kill that. However, I believe we can escape from them. So we're going to attempt to disengage. We're going to leave. Oh, they tried they just decided to harry us and disrupt us rather than actually fight us. So are they going to chase us? It does not appear they are. So when you harry or disrupt somebody, it slows you down briefly, so you can't just keep doing it constantly. And no, leave us alone. We're going to attempt to engage again. They're going to leave us alone, and we should be able to get into the station. Okay. Cool, cool. That was far harder than it should have been. Normally, I can get into that station without any trouble, but there you go. You can see, even if you screw it up terribly like I just did, you'll get in just fine. Open the comm directory. Talk to the agent here. Complete the quest. There we go. Now we need to go back to Voltabas at Ansira. Now I'm going to sell stuff here using the black market because I don't want to pay the tariff. Confirm. And let's see if they have any ships for sale. No, don't sell my ship. I don't like kites. Don't like mudskippers. Don't need a dram. Don't want a Cerberus. Okay, nothing here I particularly need. We're going to go back in here and we're going to go back and buy some crew from the black market basically until we're full. Um, the easy way to do this is just control click and it will give you the maximum number your, your current fleet can hold. So you're going to need more crew in a minute. This is why I'm doing this. They're cheaper here than they will be back at, at Ansira. So we're just gonna buy them and we're going to leave. And now we're gonna book it. So we're gonna turn, turn off our go dark ability, turn on our sustained burn. We could emergency burn out of there, but there's just no reason to. Turn back on our transponder and fly back to Ansira, or Ansira, whatever, I don't know. I keep pronouncing that different. We'll just say Ansira. Salvage this on our way through, because why not? And boom, there we go. Okay. Open the comm directory, talk to Volta. Is there a problem? No, there's not. Okay, so they're going to have us go grab an AI core. This fight is against AI ships that do not use shields. So if you want to slightly change your loadout to something, if you know what you're doing, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. You shouldn't have a problem with it. This fight is very easy, especially with your little drones. These The, the drones from the Shepard make pretty short work of them generally. Um, nope, nobody here worth taking. I would consider buying that Shepard, but I'm also very, very, very poor right now. So. We'll fly over here to this gas giant. And now we need to use our, no, we don't want to establish a colony. We need to use our active sensor burst. Oh, we detected something down there. It turns off your uh, sustained burn, so turn that back on again and just fly down here. And there's a something. Hello, something, domain error probe. We'll approach it, explore it, engage the automated defenses. We got three, that's, that's okay. Sometimes you only get two. 
Now, between the ion cannon and the uh, the drones on our little wayfarer here, I'm having him escort me. Um, you usually don't have too bad a time with this fight, but it can be a little difficult because these things are very aggressive as they have no armor, so. There we go, he's dead, oh boy. So I'm gonna cycle my shields there for a moment because I don't want to uh, be overloaded. I also got hit in the engines by an EMP missile, which is why I was spinning because I didn't have a choice. Guns back on. Nope, I overloaded. There we go. That's what happens when you overload. It's bad. Now I'm spinning intentionally. <laughs> the reason is to distribute damage across my armor so that I'm not taking all the hits in the same place because that is very bad when that happens. That's how you have people start hitting your hull. They drill through your armor. Oh, that's who's doing it. Okay. Okay, managed to dodge the missiles that time. He's got two launchers. That's fun. Those missiles are by themselves pretty harmless, but they're kind of annoying. And in the wrong situation, they can be absolutely lethal. If someone uses them to get behind you and then cuts you apart from the back, that, that's pretty bad. Claim victory, pick through the wreckage, grab some stuff. We got an Arbalast, that's pretty cool. All right, if you noticed, I don't know if you did, I am now full on fuel and over full. So if I press R, take all, I'm now massively over fuel. I'll be using a ton, a, a harrowing 9.8 supplies per day. If I just control click on the fuel, I'm now using 5.5, which will go down to 0.03 within a day or so. So generally it is not worth holding on to things like fuel Supplies cost 100 base, fuel costs 25 base, so unless you're like right next to a planet where you can sell stuff, you'll lose more supplies in the transporting of goods when you're overstocked than you will gain by selling them. So don't do not do it unless you have to. All right, ooh, uh, derelict ship. We're going to salvage that, make sure we don't get over fuel, and we're now over uh, on those two, but we got some more supplies, so that's good. Those are cargo pods that we left there. Okay, we're just gonna salvage once just to see if we get anything good. We lost three heavy machinery now, but we got fourth, cool. All right, supplies are worth far more than uh, metals. Metals are also very cheap. So don't worry about just tossing them into space if you have to. All right, <clears throat> head back, give the commander the good news that we have indeed acquired the AI core. Also, just so you know, AI cores are super illegal in Star Sector. Uh, a bit of the game's lore, there was a giant war caused by rogue AI. People are a bit touchy about the subject. Do not carry those things around if you're likely to get talked to by the cops. However, they're also super valuable, so. For many, many things. Sell so that. I like Reapers, but I don't think, oh. Actually, don't sell any guns right now because you're going to need them in a minute. So confirm, hello, there's your AI core. Okay, she wants us to fight some people, but we don't have the ships to do it. So she says, here, I know where some ships are, conveniently enough, so you uh, press E. There you go, Terra, or Tetra. Fly down to Tetra, and you'll find many, many goodies. All right, so we're going to salvage a bunch of stuff here. I'm going to put in a quick break because this video is getting a little long, and I'll be right back. 